Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am so so happy you're here. Today we're gonna be playing another game very cozily and relaxing. This game isn't your typical cozy game but there is no combat in this game and it's quite similar to another favorite game of mine, Subnautica. So I thought we would play it here on the channel together. Also, they were so kind enough to send me a couple copies of the game to check out on the channel, so it was incredibly kind of them. Um, I'm gonna launch it and we're gonna look at how the game is played. Um, I'm gonna call it <laughs> ASMR Planet, the game mode. Oh, there's even a relaxed one. It's pretty cool. I'm actually just gonna leave it on standard though because standard is what uh, I was playing last night and it's um, it's really not too difficult. I've actually never seen this cutscene before. I joined a multiplayer game. So we are crash landing on a Martian-esque planet. Very red, very dusty, very barren. And you may, if you've played Subnautica, kind of see the similarities. The crash pod on a world. And similar to Subnautica, when you step out and... Well, you would be running out of oxygen because you're underwater. In this one, it's because there's no O2. So, if we want to breathe, see a little O2 meter going down, we can just step back in here. I've got a storage crate with some stuff in it, like an oxygen capsule and some food. And I've got this little crafting thing here. My first steps, it's suggesting that I craft a backpack, put it on, craft an oxygen tank, and wear that. And make a construction a microchip, so let's work on that, let's see. First, to make that, do cobalt. Uh, to make that, quite a few more things. Let's look about, let's look at the oxygen tank, let's see. Two cobalt, iron, and magnesium. And the backpack is two iron. So if I get like three iron, two cobalt, and one magnesium, I should have enough for all of it. This is cobalt. And I just kind of scale, it looks like scanning, but you're like, um, mining it. This is iron. Kind of sparkly. Here's another cobalt. And here's magnesium, and I needed that. Magnesium looks kind of like scallops, like shells, kind of things. This is ice. That's silicum. Here's another iron. I think I need like one more iron, right? And what was the last thing? I have forgotten already. Oh, my oxygen is level, level is low. Let me just grab that before I'll pop back in. Let's make the backpack. And I can put that on. And now I've got more room. Isn't that great? And oh, I actually have everything I need to make the oxygen tank. Put that on. And now I've got 145 seconds of oxygen. Isn't that great? What do I need to make this construction microchip? Two silicon, two magnesium. I definitely saw. Well, there's some silicon right here. And. It's that shell-looking thing, like right there in the middle of the screen. Here's another silicon. I should be running, because running doesn't seem to have any effect. So I'm going to be playing this for a bit and showing you what the gameplay is like, and then I'm going to hop in my multiplayer save, and you're going to be able to see what the game looks like, what the world looks like after you've been working on it for a bit, because our goal here and this is one thing I love most about the game. You have these clear, concise goals of terraforming this planet. So it's kind of a red, dusty mess. Like I said, I mean, look at this. It's really, it's really barren. It's not great. And we're slowly going to be terraforming this planet, trying to make it green and lush, um, bring back water and fauna. Actually, I don't know about fauna. Flora, for sure. Uh, I haven't played that far yet, so I'm still working on terraforming. Uh, let me make my construction microchip, and now I'm able to, like, 
once we put it in, build like a hub, a living compartment. Cause you can't, I can't keep living in this. You know, this isn't like, it's not feasible. So let's see, what was it? Uh, titanium and iron. Here's a titanium. And let me get two more iron. Here's one. See, our terraformation index right now is sitting at zero to I, which is not really that great. So I'm just gonna build my living compartment. Maybe I need to put it on a foundation. I should probably put it on a foundation. I'll build my foundation. Let me get one more iron since I just used that. It's quite hard to find iron sometimes definitely felt like at first I was just drowning in iron and I was like, I don't need iron, I have loads of iron. And then in the late game, well not late, but like mid game, I'm like, please, I just need iron. And actually, let me pop back in here because I, I'm running out of oxygen. So that's about the only stressful part of the game would be you running low on your oxygen, your health, and your water. Those are the other two stats there. Aside from that, it's really a, quite a peaceful game. Okay, let me put this on here. I don't know, it looks good, right? I'm gonna put the door over here so I don't need to like, um, Well, just get some more stuff. I'm gonna need it. There's no real harm. The only thing you do is you just use up your backpack space. Here's iron, magnesium. What else do I need? Silicon. Here's some right here. It's a set map. Um, it's not like procedurally generated or anything. So there is. to explore. So you may see over here, there's like a giant wreck. And exploring wrecks is a big part of it. Okay, so we're now going to start working on terraforming the planet by creating, well, let's, work, let's build a drill and a wind turbine. See how you just constantly need iron for like absolutely everything? And then we can have some power, we can power our little hab, and then we can work on terraforming. Um, and one of my favorite board games is actually Terraforming Mars. So I love it. I love this because it reminds me of playing Terraforming Mars. So, let me just pop inside. So if I get uh, a wind turbine, like let's say I put it like, I don't know, put it over here. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Uh, anywhere you put it, it kind of just powers the world. So it doesn't have to be like connected in any way. And then I'll get a drill. Like I'll put it over here. And now it's drilling into the world and it's releasing gases. So see in the top right, our terraformation index is slowly gonna go up. We're at 2 Ti. We're at 3 Ti. We're at 4 Ti. <laughs> Very slowly. We can see it over there. Alright, what else do we need to make? Terraformation screen, blueprint screen, progress screen, heater, a veggie tube. Oh my, quite a lot. Okay. Make a veggie tube. I need ice. There's lots of ice right here. And you know what else I should do? So I should go back and I should get all the stuff over here because we don't really need to go back here anymore now that we have another source of oxygen. So I'll just uh, transfer all that and um, 
was thinking about making this deconstruction chip. Oh, I need a silicone for that. Let me just grab a silicone. Oh, I always need iron. You know that now. Always need that iron. Always be ironing. And then if I make that chip, I can put that in, and now I can, like, deconstruct that, and now I get that iron back. Okay, did I actually have a message? Welcome to your assigned planet. Your mission is to advance the terraformation process of this world. You'll need to generate O2, heat, and pressure. First, reach 175,000 DI and create a blue atmosphere from the Sentinel Corp in the year 3058. Our hydration level is getting a little low. I'm going to make a water bottle. I'm not going to drink it yet. I usually wait till it gets a little lower. I'm sorry. My dog is barking. I did not put her up. Let me just go grab her. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, so I was going to make this uh, veggie tube. Magnesium to do that. Magnesium. That's the one that sticks up like little shells. Oh, if I see an iron, I feel like I have to get an iron, you know. Here's some. So you see, there's just like resources littered everywhere. And at first, I was like, will they regenerate? And basically. No, they don't seem to regenerate, but you can kind of get more. I won't say too much on that. I know that was very cryptic. All right, my veggie tube, I'm going to put it over here. And so if I open it, I put a plant in like this lerma seed, and it's going to generate some oxygen. See? 0 0.15 ppq per second. I don't know what. And it is using some energy. Okay, let's try to make these screens. Mm, cobalt and silicon. Cobalt and silicon. I should probably drink that water. About now. Yep. Okay. There we go. Here's my information screen. I'm gonna put it uh, right there. Oh, low power. Okay, I need to make another wind turbine. Oh, that, that's awfully close, but they don't touch. Okay. So here we go. Our O2 oxygen, A PPQ. So that's slowly going up, and our pressure is going up because that's what the uh, drill's working on at the moment. We don't have anything working on heat. So all that's contributing to our terraformation rating right there, 62. So to generate heat, we'd need to make one of these heaters, but we don't have any of this iridium. It's a little more of a rare resource. What else can we make? A uh, blueprint screen, a progress screen. Uh, we can make a progress screen. No, we don't have the, like, we don't have the thing for it. Okay, won't make that just yet then. Um, ground to T1 heater and the progress screen. Okay, um, I'm just gonna go out and maybe it's... Oh, you know what I need to make is one of these storage crates so that I can put my stuff in it. Sorry, that door keeps opening and it's driving me crazy. Okay, so I can all my stuff in it. Um, I'll take an oxygen capsule because I feel like that's something that, you know, is important. I was gonna go see if I could go to this rack up here. Oh wait, I just remembered something I need for the rack is a flashlight. What do I need to make that flashlight? Uh, silicon into magnesium, but I'm also like out of room here. So there doesn't, there's not really day night. Um, it just it 
does kind of get dark occasionally and then it's very very brief <laughs> okay so when you hit certain ti index ratings you unlock new stuff so i did unlock the blueprint for this um t2 i think the t2 oxygen i don't know where i would get that but we passed a 100 terraformation index rating of um, 100 we're at 105 107 108 if i build another drill we can speed that up titanium and iron let's do one more and so you're constantly working on getting new stuff um finding more resources building your habitat um making sure you have enough food and water exploring it's really really it's really cool i've been having an absolute blast it has overwhelmingly positive reviews on steam and so far i i rate it very positively as well i think that it's oh look there's another crash and look at that up there so I think the game is really fun in single player, but I think where the real joy lies is in playing multiplayer, playing with your friends. So I've been playing a multiplayer game. This is actually my first time doing single player. Um, and it is fun, but I just think it's more fun to work on terraforming a planet with your friends. So now I'm going to show you what the planet looks like after it's been terraformed a little bit. Um, after you reach that terraformation index of 175,000, which is what we need to create, reach a blue sky. And I can kind of give you a little base tour <laughs> of our world. So, um, okay, let's go travel to that planet. Here we are in my... This is all that remains of my app, which is funny because it looks like like the one I just made, except like even more bare. I have a craft machine thing. Um, so basically this was much, much bigger than what you're looking at. Um, but for reasons that I won't mention, we decided to move the entire base. So slowly but surely, we packed everything up and demolished like all of it so that all that's left is this. But as we step outside, you'll see a huge difference. Blue skies. Because our terraformation index is at over 500,000. So we have achieved blue skies. And it looks significantly better. There's where we started in the little crash pod. Um, so you can see I put, I built my little app, or our, our app, a very similar spot in both games. And I've got a beacon, so that blue one is where the new base is, and I'm gonna go show you guys around. I don't have to worry about oxygen as much in this game, because as you can see, I've got quite a lot. I've been able to update my oxygen tanks a few times. I also have way more inventory space, and I'm able to hold more gear as well. So this is what game looks like after a little bit of progress. So I just climb this hill and you'll be able to see the base. It's, it's pretty big and it's not the most beautiful base in the world, but it is functional and that's the most important thing. Just remember these racks that I was pointing out earlier. So this is near where we where we built ours. Here's our solar panel farm. And we're doing some drilling here. Lots of drilling. And now, literally the last thing we did was just finished building this and moving everything. So I'll say that it's not like, um, 
it doesn't look like much right now Is my partner. We're playing together. He's just pointing at me. Oh, now he's gonna do a dance for us. So, you can kind of see, now that I can see another player, we are criminals. Uh, well, I didn't know that at first, but yeah, we're like inmates and we chose to like um, terraform this planet to reduce our sentence or something like that. Here's our screen. Our O2 is moving very fast. Heat is rising, pressure is rising, biomass is the thing we're currently working on. And we reached blue skies, and then we reached clouds, and now we're working on the next stage, which is rain. So, yes, clearly uh, it's just kind of a big empty space right now. It's very open concept, you know, we went with an open floor plan. <laughs> this corner is called my garden, where I'm growing some food. I'm growing some beans and squash. And I have these big veggie tubes that are generating a lot of oxygen. And this is uh, storage central, I guess. Uh, I don't think you can fit in that little bit. It's kind of annoying. I wonder if I could move that over a bit and like walk in between. So yeah, right now I think he's in the middle of like uh, organizing. Ah, oh, see, yeah, that's the way to go. Cause um, maybe we can move those aside. Anyway, so titanium here, ice. Oh, he actually, he's working on that. I guess we must have had the exact same idea. We often share one brain. <laughs> Let's go upstairs. There's no real climb animation. You just kind of teleport. <laughs> they have this giant crafting machine. And here's... It must be very hot up here. Here's where we're generating heat. It's just, a, uh, It's boiling. So this is, like, the practical bit where, like, it's not about the view. It's just putting machines and stuff that you don't necessarily want to look at. But if we go up one more ladder, this is the... This is the observation deck. We have 360 views of the planet, and our solar farm, and our mining operation, and that big rack, and this big antenna. And another rag, and all that, and you can even see the sky. So this is my favorite part. No decorations yet because we're still in the the part of the game where you need to use your resources for practical things rather than aesthetic things. You know, I'm gonna eat uh, some beans. Okay. So yeah, let's go back down, and I also, if we go at the back, well you probably could see it out the window, but we're growing grass. How cool is that? We managed to get this sprinkler thingy, and grass is now growing here. So um, the growth is 100%, so I actually don't know if that means that like, can I recycle this and put it somewhere else, or will that get rid of the grass? Unclear. Uh, also, I wanted to try something. I tried it last night when I was playing. Let me just fill my oxygen for just a second. There is like a jumping puzzle in here. Uh, and I was trying to do it, and I fell. You can't really fall in the game. There's not fall damage. But, like, I still fell. I wonder if I can get up here. The jumping and the physics is very Skyrim. Very wonky. There's a lot of... Yeah, it's very Skyrim. And if you know what I mean by that, you know. Very Skyrim. Uh, oh, I made it. The 
so there's not full damage. Um, okay, it's this way. But there's all sorts of stuff to discover, you know? Um, up here, there it is, that chest. I wanted to see what's up with this chest, what's in it. Oh, uranium, super alloy, aluminum, and a blueprint microchip. That's good. And I, I always deconstruct stuff so that I, I can't see, so that I know that I've been there. I'm seriously, it, it's so dark in here. And yes, I should have a. Probably should have drank some water before I did this. I'll go. I'll get some ice right here and then I can make myself a bottle of water as soon as I get back to the base. So I did this last night and my... my O2 got dangerously low. Um, and in fact, I started to black out as I... literally as I crossed the threshold. My screen went completely black. It was pretty... <laughs> I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> really getting it close. I think it gets darker than it used to. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a water bottle. And there we go. And so now I can sort that stuff I just got. Let's see, I got some iron. Uh, I have... no. Metals. Okay, I don't know what he's doing, so I'll just let him do that. I don't know. We have to talk about the way we're organizing things, so I'll probably I'll probably stop and um, oh wow common metals iron Organics, okay I think we should keep organics and like grown food separate, so maybe I'll talk with him about that Oh, actually I wanted to look at whatever that blueprint was. You go here and you say decode blueprint microchip shredder machine. What is that? Destroys items placed inside and eats osmium and explosive powder. Two things I've never seen before. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, let me pop back up to the observation deck, which is the prettiest place. Can see a bit of grass down there. I was gonna maybe see if I could put grass all the way like around our base as like a you know pretty like a lawn, <laughs> you know. Um, but this is this is Planet Crafter. It's honestly so fun. We got so addicted to this last night, and we're probably gonna play for like the next six hours, like all night. The humble beginnings, right? We started right down there and we kept that as a little auxiliary base in case we still need it. Probably gonna want to go visit that wreck again at some point. Um, guess there was some more stuff in there, but we weren't able to unlock the rest of it. But we got blue skies, so that is one of the coolest things I wanted to show you. I think next step will be making the ground a lot more green and with the rain, hopefully it comes some water. Um... We'll see how that looks. So, hopefully this wasn't too spoilery, just kind of like an example of what the game will look like. I mean, it literally, if you just look at the game on Steam, you see images of how the planet will look, um, the goals that you're working towards, so. Uh, it honestly gets two thumbs up for me, especially if you want to be playing the multiplayer. Okay, this game's right up my alley. We, personally, me and my partner, we loved playing Subnautica. And even though it wasn't a co-op game or a multiplayer game, we played it two-player in that we would sit together. One of us would be controlling it, and the other would be, like, looking at a map and navigating, keeping stock of what we have. Like, we managed to make it into a two-player game, even though only one of us was playing. But... We've always wanted a co-op subnautic experience, and not like a modded one, but like a real one. And this really scratches that itch. So, if you've got friends or a partner that you love to game with, and you love doing like, base building, management kind of stuff, oh my gosh, you're gonna have a blast. So, I, I hope you guys like this video. Um, yeah. 
yeah, this is like, I'm going to make it, even though it's a little bit of a different game than what I normally do, because this is what I'm playing right now, and it's the kind of game that I play in uh, my real life when I'm not playing cozy games. Like, I love playing games like this. And I just wanted to do one more update, because after I filmed that, we played loads more and made even more progress, and change the way our base looks, and now we've kind of got this, like, room sectioned off with these walls and, like, these shelves for some reason, and just storing random stuff, apparently. The organization system is still pretty much here. We have overflow storage, and very rare, extremely rare, but by far the coolest, my favorite part of what we've been working on since is my bio lab. So I've got a bio lab in here, and I say mine because I'm the one who is basically, I've decided to be in charge of like the food and the oxygen production and the biomass production. So this is mine, and then this awesome Biodome. It's also mine. I love it in here. It's so cool. And um, I've been growing more grass, trying to increase that biomass production. So all around here. We've got this water collector now. Hi, Leia. She's come to see. And then upstairs. Where's our staircase? Still a bunch of heat, maybe more heat, and up here it's still largely the same, but we even have this rocket launch platform, and we've launched rockets from, we've been launching satellites, and then those satellites uh, give us the ability to see the world, so we now have a map. We also have a map that we can access, like, right uh, on our wristwatch. I don't really know exactly what <laughs> what it would be that we're looking at this on. Uh, you can zoom in and out. And if I zoom out a bit, you can see this is all water. We also launched, like, a satellite that shows us where, like, local resources are and everything. Oh, it's just so cool. Um... We've just been having the best time, and oh, there's some more water over there. Look at that. Also, we have jetpacks now, which is really cool. What is that noise? I think there's some sort of like storm happening. The weather's been sort of changing, and it rains occasionally. And if, you, if we go in here, you can just see that. Our next stage is lakes, and that's taking a while, we're not even 15% to lakes, but we are at liquid water, and as you could see on that interface, quite a big chunk of water is forming here, which if you if we zoom in, this is where our crash pod was. So, that's why we moved the base. I wasn't going to say earlier because I didn't really want to spoil it yet, but I think if you made it this point, you might be interested to know. Um, we've got loads of markers everywhere to tell us where different points of interest are that we can go to. Um, I just freaking love this game, and I, I can't wait to play more, because the next thing, as I increase the biomass, is we'll be bringing back insects and animals. Remember earlier when I was like, flora and fauna. Well, I don't know if there'll actually be fauna, but I know there's flora. I think there's <laughs> there's fauna, too. Which is so exciting. Okay. So, this is my second update from all together. This is about seven hours worth of game. We've been playing for seven hours, so. And we're at, just about to hit ten million. There we go. Terraforming index. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll let past Jubilee get back to 
wrapping up the video, but thank you guys for enjoying the, the tour of my my bread and joy, my bio lab and my bio dome. And then there's just this big room that I don't know what we're doing here. Okay. So thank you guys for watching. Um feel free to give it a like and a comment for the algorithm. And please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Turn notifications on for three relaxing videos a week. Have a great week, you guys. Um, I hope it's a cozy one, and I'll talk to you next time.